Yo, what's up guys, it's Receiver. I'm back, and I misspelled subscribe. No, I didn't. I don't know. Why does that not look spelled right? Okay, let's just get into the video. Today, I'm gonna tell you guys about why you're getting lied to. You are getting lied to. And I have a bunch of different points. I wrote notes out for this video because you have been getting lied to this whole year about things. First off, let's just start with the first point. Best build in the game, right? Two-way slash and playmaker. Everyone loves this build, right? It, it, it's just dominant. Dominates everything. First, already made it wrong. What did I do wrong? Speed. Wrong. This is the best pie chart for it. You still get 99 speed. Just trust me. You'll go minimum weight. You'll be a demon. <clears throat> okay, let's now, now let's make the badges for it. Let me show you why you're getting lied to. You're not getting lied to because the badges are right. And I'll have to tweak it because I always mess this build up for some reason. Every time I make it, like I know you're supposed to take one off of here, two there. And then I think it's one off of playmaking, if I'm correct, to keep 20. Yeah. And then, so you make the two-way slash and playmaker build. The best build in the game is right here, basically, if you're a guard. And I'm going to prove why people lie to you about everything in this game. So you can go here and just max your stuff out. <clears throat> I like to go like this. Perfect build, right? 61 badges, you're a demon. Okay, so now, let me get to my point and stop just rambling. So, you, you know, everyone says 6'5", and then they go minimum weight. Bam. The problem is that people tell you to go minimum wingspan to speed boost. First off, you can stay 6'5", and go max wingspan, but you're not gonna, or 85.3, because wingspan is such a big deal in the game. I don't know how many times I've had to talk about it, but my wing and my guard with a small wingspan just plays so much different. Like there's such a differential on the court. Max wingspan, your build will get stops. You will get blocks. You will get snatches out of the sky from behind. You will do so much. Just trust me. This build, yes, 98 to speed boost. But is speed boosting that important? No. My favorite build is my facilitating finisher who has an 81 ball control. In takeover, you can still speed boost. So if you make two or three shots, you're still speed boosting. It's not that big of a deal. It's not a big deal at all. Yeah, 98, you'll be able to speed boost. If, if it's really that big of a deal, then go 6-4. If you're that much of a crybaby, then go 6-4. And then you can make it 85.1 and you can speed boost at 97 instead of 98 because 98 is hard to hold but 97 is easy for some reason. I don't know why. 98 <clears throat> is really not that hard to hold but people make problems and lose games. Things go, you know, things happen. Three-pointer doesn't matter this year. Your three-pointer can be a 29 and you will green up. Your th three-pointer can be a 34 and you'll green up. Attributes don't matter. What matters is your badges. Attributes are nothing this year. And if you don't understand that, then you you just never understand. Like having an 84 driving an 85 driving dunk versus a 96 driving dunk is no difference. You still get the best contact dunks in the game. You're still the same dunking build, basically. Because you can still dunk just as good as someone else. So in my opinion, these things that people tell you like, this is why I think this build is good because it gets plus two points of attributes here, and plus two there, and plus two here. I've seen a, a guy with a build, a rebounding wing build with a 47 steal, sit and get 20 steals a game. Like, like not, that's over exaggerating, but he, he will get three or four steals a game. A game, guys. A game. And we're going to act like that's... Not crazy? <laughs> like attributes still matter? No, they don't. They don't matter. Wingspan matters. Badges matter. This right here is the best build. You'll still green up. My facilitating finisher that I used in my gameplay video, last video, greened up shots time after time after time. Starts with the same, same three-pointer as this build. Has a 64 three-pointer at 98. Sorry. It started off with a 62, I think. Or 61. I don't even remember. It was low. Very low. And he cashes out with a 64. Off the dribble greens. Non-stop. 
That's number one. Number two, <clears throat> what I think people lie to you about is what badges are the best. So we made a two-way slash and playmaker. I'll get into center badges too. But for now, let's just work on this build for today. For today, we're just going to look at this point guard build and these builds and why you're getting lied to about certain things in my opinion. First, you, you need to put on the best badges. Everyone knows these three are the best. These three are the best. Now, this fourth best is Relentless Finisher on my soul. <clears throat> you get your whole energy bar back after dunking the ball. Do you know what that means? <laughs> if you don't understand that and you play point guard, then you just don't understand this game. You, you haven't played enough 2K. Come back to me in a few months. Come back to me in 21 when you're just a demon. Okay? So now these are my shooting badges. People like different stuff. That's fine. But these are the best, in my opinion. You don't need anything else. You get Green Machine. I don't think it's any difference on... I don't know. I didn't see a lot of difference on Hall of Fame than on Bronze. I don't even see a difference in 74 three-pointer and 64, to be honest. I play with this two-way slash and play my facilitating finisher. I think they shoot the dead same. I don't see a difference. They green up whenever I time my shot right. So what's the difference? What's good is Hall of Fame badges. That's what makes this build good. Here's your Hall of Fame categories. So now what are your badges here? So badges, you're lied to. And if, if someone told you, you know, oh, these are the GOAT badges right here. This is what you run. Space Creator Tyana's wrong. 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 You don't need that stuff. If you know how to play basketball, you don't need to do all these dribble moves and force ankle breakers. That's not... That's not getting you better. Like, getting making someone's ankles break is fun. It's fun to do that, but you can do it in takeover anyways. I'm trying to make my teammates around me succeed. Dimer Hall of Fame, Floor General Hall of Fame, Handles for Days Hall of Fame, Quick First Step, and Unpluckable. That's my favorite badge setup. Because it's it's like, okay, if I get stole if the ball gets stolen, I didn't have on silver unpluckable. You know, un you know, I didn't have on silver. I had on Hall of Fame, so there's nothing I could have done about it. You know, handles for days. I I was tired. I have one Hall of Fame, so nothing I can do. You know, my teammates missed a shot. Nothing else I can do. I got I got everything they need. You need to put on the right badges. The badges that help you and your team succeed. These help you. This helps you. Unpluckable helps you. Tight handles, getting an angle breaker once every six plays? Versus your teammate having plus four to all attributes? Catching a dimer pass? Not getting ripped as much? I mean, I see my I see my player get ripped all the time when I put it on gold or silver. So, these are what I leave it on now all the time. <clears throat> Defensive badges. I know some people show these off. Hall of Fame clamps. This is what I do right here. Bronze. Gold. 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 Hall of Fame. And then I'll go... Sometimes I'll run it like this, just for fun. Sometimes I'll go here, Tireless Defender Silver. Sorry, I was being quiet for a second because I was just thinking about the different kind of ways I set up my badges. This is normally my favorite. You know, if I get beat to the rim, I chase down long wingspan blocks. If your wingspan is long, use this. If your wingspan is short, use... Oof, I don't know. Something like this. That's my guess. If your wingspan's short, you're not going to get a chase down. If your wingspan is long and you made the build right, then yeah, bang, there you go. You just got a sick build, sick badges. So you get lied to about badges. Okay, number three. <clears throat> what else you're getting lied to about? In my opinion, legend builds suck. They suck. They suck for... A non-legend. Not for other legends, they're good. <laughs> but non-legends suck with legend builds. I've seen it time after time. Like, oh my god, Joe Knows made this build and I copied it, dude. It was it was really good. It sucks. The build is not comp. It's comp for him because he's got 94 badges. It's comp for him because he's got 80, 80 badges still. But for you, with the 40 less, what do you have, 40 badges? You have 30 badges on some builds? That build's not comp. 
I mean, like, what build? I, I, I saw Joe Nose make this build. And I saw a kid copy it in the park, not in Legend. Let me just show it off real quick. So, I'm not going to, I don't know exactly how he made it, but this is just my guess. He had 30 defensive badges, right? So, he's going to be, I don't know. I think he had on perimeter D and lateral quickness with interior just so he could do everything. He probably had something like this, right? And then he had up. I think he had every single defensive stat up, if I'm right. <clears throat> and then he had his badges. It was really weird. Something like this, I think. This. Then he put up his three-pointer mid-range. I made it at center, but I'm pretty sure he made it at power forward. But this is just to prove a point. Let's say he even took steel off. Wants to give himself some post moves or something. I'm trying to think how he would maximize his badges effectively. I just don't know. I'm pretty sure he had a decent amount of badges. I'm not really sure exactly. Let's just say this is the build, right? This build sucks. Look at this build. You can't drive. You can't shoot. You get one shooting badge. For him, he gets 11, right? So it's good. For him, oh, I get 22 finishing with a 95 standard dunk. That's good. Look at my defense. I get 39 defensive badges. That's insane. You know, he probably has his lateral quickness up and not his perimeter D. Perimeter D would be kind of a weird thing to run instead of lateral quickness. <clears throat> Or, you know, okay, I got 13 playmaking instead of three. One shooting badge? If you're a non-legend and you make this build, I just want you to know that you're an idiot. What are you doing making a legend build? That's why it's called a legend build. My legend build is goaded. My legend build goes off. Because it's a legend build. It's not good as a non-legend. I can explain this all day. Go watch your favorite legend builds and then go watch the most dominant builds and how many badges they have. They dominate because of badges. 30 badges and you have 4 shooting. You're not going to cash out. I mean, yeah, you can. But say you have 30 badges, 4 shooting, 10 playmaking, 15 finishing, and 6 defensive. That's terrible. The reason your favorite YouTuber is using it because he gets 40 extra. He's got 70. He's got more than any average build in the game. 40 extra badges makes any build better. Stats don't matter. Like I said, that's why legend builds are good. As non-legend, it sucks. So I'm sorry, but... You got lied to, man. You've been lied to about legend builds. Do not make them. Make a build when it's relevant, it's good. Everyone can play with it. The two-way slash and play dominant. Facilitating finisher dominant. So many builds I've seen dominant. I've seen the Derrick Rose point guard build. Very, very good. Right? But there's some builds that just they just don't work. And to me that's legend build. So I'll get off that topic because I've ranted probably four or so minutes on that. But <clears throat> what else have YouTubers lied to you about? Does win percent matter? Let's think about this. As a cop player. Does win percent matter? And when they say, why are you running? Why are you ducking? Why are you scared? They're lying to you, bro. Small YouTubers hate people that duck because they can't get games. They don't have fun. And I'm the same way. People duck me all day long and I laugh. I'm like, come on, bro. Come on, dude. But do you honestly learn something from getting absolutely smoked by someone? In my opinion, no. You don't. You don't learn anything by getting smoked by someone that's way better than you that you can't learn from. You can't learn from moves you don't know. That's not teaching you. They're not teaching you how to play the game. They're beating the piss out of you. They're not teaching you anything. I think when you run, you're scared, and yeah, it's kind of a soft thing to do, but do I think it's holding you back from getting better? No, I think that's a stupid, bad accusation. I have thought that my whole 2k career even though i'm not a bum i got high 81 percent i play effective you know i play with the squad every day but when i see kids run that are rookie twos and pro threes i have nothing to offer them i'm not trying to be their coach i'm just playing i'm gonna try to beat them like i beat everyone you know 
I'm not trying to, you know, here's how you do a momentum and here's how you do your moving heads to get a step back and shoot a three quickly. Like, <clears throat> how do you get better? You watch YouTube. You look up tutorials on how to dribble. You spend time in your mind core. You spend time playing with people. You spend time practicing on your jump shot. You turn your meter off. You shoot 500 shots in your mind core by yourself. You spend time. How do you get better at anything? You learn from someone. You take notes off of other people's game once you're starting to get better. That's one of the best things I've done. Watching my own teammates ISO. That's why I sit up spot up. I sit and watch my teammates ISO instead of just begging for the ball in the corner. Watch them ISO and take moves from their game whenever I'm on guard. Learn how to use their moves effectively. <clears throat> Studying what the opponents are doing. Learning habits. Reading players. That's how you get better. You don't get better by getting you the brake speed off you 500 times. No, you don't. That's not true. You get better by playing people around your skill gap. So me, when I play people around 80-something win percents, that are good. They hide, you know, they hide behind screens or they ISO and they play really smart. You know, once you learn their tendencies and what they're going to do and you start to understand, I know what this player is going to do before he does it. That's when you'll start becoming effective at 2K. When you start to guess your opponent's moves and become unpredictable. That's the two things you have to learn. Guessing your opponent's move, becoming unpredictable. That's another thing that people are lying to you about. Ducking doesn't make you a puss. Is it soft? Yeah. Does it teach you anything by getting the brake speed off you? No. And I'm not going to talk about that topic anymore. That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. I'm not frustrated or upset or anything. Just a little more energized. A little more excited. Just happy to be doing what I'm doing. So, yeah. That's why I decided to just try to share the most information I knew with you today. And yeah, sorry that I had no gameplay at the end. Nothing to really even show, but I was just on my rant. So, no need to show anything, right? Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. I'm out. Peace.